My sixth day on the Butterfield Overland Stagecoach route began as usual, with a sunrise and a fresh cup of coffee. I'd spent the evening at the site of the Oatman Massacre, and I was ready to move on further down the trail. The trail originally took this route off the Mesa, but it was far too rocky and deteriorated to attempt in the modern day. I could see the trail on the desert floor below, but I'd have to find another way down. You can see the original path in this old lithograph. After breaking camp, I set off to find my route and reconnect with the trail. Along the way, I came across this sign. I found it comical, as there was no such sign as I approached from the west. If you saw the previous video, <laughs> you know that sign's pretty accurate. Fortunately, I was able to find a much easier path down the Mesa, and soon arrived at the site of Oatman Flat Station. After the Civil War, they called this site Fours Station, named after old Billy Four, a Missouri man who lived here and paved an easier road up to the next Mesa. Four and his family were also plagued by the Apaches, having over 150 cattle stolen and his homestead burglarized over the whole decade they lived here. The cemetery at the site is the resting place for four of Billy's children who died here. Times were hard. There's an outstanding Eagle Scout project that has beautifully preserved the history of this station. Kudos to Stanley Heisey for organizing it, and congrats on becoming an Eagle Scout. The station, as well as Four's house, are now amidst plowed fields. As you drive by, you can almost see Billy Four out in the fields himself. The section Billy paved is quite impressive, and it's certainly fun to ascend. I made my way up, and on to the next mason. Soon, I reached the end of my time mesa hopping and followed the trail to the last ascent. Somehow, my film here has become corrupted. But, as you can see from the first part of this video on my descent, it was very challenging and quite a tight fit. It ultimately resulted in a shifting rock dislodging one of the large rocks and piling into my rear fender. Fortunately, Land Rover designed the fenders to take a beating, so the rock only popped off one piece, securing the plastic fender. And unfortunately, this is where the film corrupts. As I made my way down the trail, I passed some more old ruins along the way. We're inconsistent with the Cottom and Butterfield Station, but the area is full of ghost towns and unique sites. One of those sites is the fascinating Painted Rock Petroglyph Site. It's the largest known site in the area and is home to over 3,800 petroglyphs and another 1,000 instances of historic inscriptions or graffiti. The Hohokam people lived here once, and they farmed here from 350 to 550 AD. However, Due to the high traffic of trades and raids in the Gila River Valley, the petroglyphs are not attributed to any one tribe in particular. If you're into this sort of thing, Archaeology Southwest has recently published an outstanding report on the boulders. I just found it fascinating to look at all the boulders and think about the stories they could tell. Boulders have been a key landmark in the area and an instrumental part of the region's history. I was glad I stopped by. I'm also glad there weren't any stakes.
From the painted rock petroglyphs, I, I set back out on the trail and headed to the Gila Bend Station. The town of Gila Bend has remained. And while the only old structure in the area is a church, the location plotted for the station is fittingly now a United States Post Office. This is indicative of why I believe the Butterfield Overland Stagecoach Route is the first true interstate system in America and was so instrumental in enabling our vast country to be connected. I saddled back up and I was off to the next station on the trail, the aptly named Butterfield Pass. The pass is located within the Sonoran Desert National Monument. I had read remnants of the trail were still present in this portion, and I didn't want to miss it. Upon arriving to the entrance, the local map informed me that the area had been closed to motor vehicles and all 4x4 traffic. Fortunately, it was situations just like this that I had brought my bike along for. I met a native Arizona woman who advised me to visit Tombstone on my journey down the road. As I unpacked the bike and all of its accoutrements, I was ready and soon set forth into the desert. The soft sand along the path was pretty challenging to pedal through, but I was determined to check out the pass, so I persisted on. A short way into the pass, I reached Happy Camp, one of the only watering holes along this stretch of trail. This sign was also courtesy of another Eagle Scout project. I inspected the cistern and prepared for the final push up the pass. It was a challenge, but it was pretty cool to crest the pass and see the route continuing on ahead of me. Had to take a selfie. Now, to ride back down and get on the road. From this point, I realized that most of the stations for the next couple miles had been covered up by the highway system. So I made a quick detour and joined my friend Layton for a dinner at the Four Peaks Brewery in Tempe. The next station I'd be visiting would be tomorrow at the Picacho Peak Station. For the evening, I'd be staying in the mountains of the Ironwood Forest National Monument. It was a fun road to drive in the dark, and it also provided me with pretty great views in the morning. I decided to only string up my hammock and I quickly fell asleep under the vast starry night sky. Appreciate you guys watching this one. It's been the longest video I've made so far, but I promise the Arizona section only gets more fun. Hope y'all are having as much fun on the Butterfield Trail as I did. Thank you for watching, liking, and subscribing. We'll see you guys soon.